We're interested in the chromatic polynomial and the chromatic number for this graph. We'll start by breaking off a triangle in these two points. That you can do if you then multiply the reduced graph with the bit that you just took off and then divide it all with P at a K2 and lambda, where this two represents that it was separated in two points. We know that this bit is equal to lambda times lambda minus one. And because all nodes in this triangle are connected to one another, it is a fully connected graph with three nodes, giving us lambda times lambda minus one times lambda minus two. We'll now go ahead and separate off yet another triangle with the same technique. And while we're at it, let's do that very same thing one last time, leaving us with this that we will deal with by removing the connection between these two nodes. That is allowed if we then subtract the very same graph but with those two nodes conjoined instead. This is a tree with four nodes, giving us lambda times lambda minus one to the power of the number of nodes in the tree minus one. And this is the same as above, a fully connected graph with three nodes. In order to get the chromatic polynomial for the main graph, we now combine what we have from the subgraphs. We'll combine these three expressions into one. That means the division goes and we eventually end up with this, a chromatic polynomial. From the chromatic polynomial, we can then derive the chromatic number by finding the lowest positive lambda such that it is equal to or greater than one. If we put in one or two as lambda in the chromatic polynomial, we get zero, so that's no good. Three, however, is 18, which is greater than or equal to one which means that the chromatic number is three.